Welcome to the Carl Shed. We're going to find Darren. He works on cars all through the day and then all through the night. <laughs> Darren. Hey. How are you going? Tell us what we've got. Um, yeah, so this is our own project. Um, we thought, uh, before we get into it, we thought, um, you know, from the perspective of being hot rodders ourselves and all of us that work at Carl's Feed Shop, we all... Um, live and breathe it so uh, maybe a bit of a series on what we're building in our own sheds and uh, hope that helps foster a little bit of uh, knowledge as to what we do in our spare time as well and as Deb said yeah when I'm not working on hot rods I'm working on hot rods so um, this is our 49 Chevy panel truck um, we bought this car in from the States a few years ago and have then um, been feverishly working on it over the last couple of years so um it's huge yeah we'll take you through a, a bit of a an insight into it you know not in full depth detail because that can come later i suppose but um just to get to know a bit more about us and a bit more about what it, what's in our shed so uh, i think deb's got some questions you know hard-hitting journalism questions that we uh, are going to go through so where did you source the project so yeah, we uh, bought this in 2017 out of Arizona, up in the high desert, in a little town called Oatman, for those who've been there. Um, little old wild west town, and on that trip, Deb and I had promised ourselves that we weren't going to buy anything unless we both fell in love with it. And sure as shit, we drove into this town and both saw this and went, that's the one. Um, yeah, and, and fell in love with it and, yeah, proceeded to import it, so... Um, but it wasn't that easy. We had to send... Yeah, the, we went into a, the shop. A, you know, nothing was for sale and, and the person in the antique shop next door said, no, nah, you'll never be able to buy anything off that guy. He never sells anything. Um, we were about, We still had about two weeks left on our trip. We emailed the guy, heard nothing back, thought nothing of it, thought, oh, well, that opportunity's gone, and then... Um, yeah, the day before we flew out back to Australia, uh, he contacted us and said, yeah, it's for sale. Um, this is how much I want. So um, that price suited us and away we went and um, got a local importer to bring it in for us. So Darren, tell us about where the project's at at the moment. Yeah, so uh, basically we're at sort of pre-paint stage for the body. Um, the chassis was all, uh, finished all the fabrication about uh, six weeks ago, then proceeded to just tidy up welds, etc., etc., and then uh, shot it off to the powder coaters just down the road from the workshop. Um, and they, they took about a week or so. We got it back in uh, what they call wet black, um, which is sort of the, the glossiest, shiniest black. Um, not that this is a show car by any stretch of the imagination. I just wanted something that was going to hopefully be able to easily hose the dirt off it. So, because the plan is for this truck to, you know, it's it's a long range hauler and we're going to use it and go everywhere in it. So, but yeah, the project at the moment. So we're on chassis assembly. Um, few I suppose points of note on the car uh, you know I've been running the airbag system you'll see the tank and compressor and stuff there at the moment we've got our solenoid block and and for those familiar with airbag systems we're just running the two rear airbags we've also got leaf spring in the in the panel truck as well so primarily it's leaf sprung um, and we'll talk about uh, the powertrain later, but um, it's a leaf spring set up with some Caltrack bars as well, just for uh, having a play later on. But primarily the airbag system is uh, for wanting to tow, you know. So we've got a an enclosed trailer that we tow the race car in and a couple of other things, and sometimes some customer cars taking them to shows, etc. So having that opportunity to vary our our ride height and, and comfort level when we're towing is certainly very important. So that was all, you know, it was a lot of, um, a lot of extra thought process had to go into this one than I usually spend, you know, let's say on a, a 32 Ford or a 34 Ford that's got an I-beam and then a nine inch and a four link because this one has to be multi-purpose. It's gonna be able to go to the drags and 
um, you know, have a bit of a play, but it's also going to tow um, and just be a general shop truck as well. So um, I really wanted to think through that entire process. So um, yeah, airbag system on the side there. You'll notice two big fuel tanks. We should be carrying nearly 130 litres of fuel on board as well. Once again, you know, for that towing opportunity and also the the long range capabilities, you know, we, um, Deb and I want to be able to eventually, you know, put the coop in the trailer and tow this to, you know, Victoria or South Australia or right around the country. And, um, you know, to do that will be, um, it's important to have a bit of range in your fuel system just in case you get caught between towns and so forth. The fuel system will be a little bit complex. We're also going to, we've got in tank pumps there, um, twin in-tank pumps um, that'll feed the LS. Uh, it's also going to have a flex fuel um, sensor in it, so when we do want to have a play, we're going to be able to switch to E85 and the computer system will actually automatically, um, uh, how would you say, sense that and then adjust the tune accordingly. So um, moving forward, you know, just doing things like mounting transmission cooler, um, that's got its own fan and everything on it there. All the bubble wrap items around here, they're actually all the exhaust system. That's all um, all ceramic coated already, so I'm just sort of leaving that in in its bubble wrap until such time as we're ready to, uh, to install. There's a big hole here. Uh, this big hole will be filled by uh, a fair amount of LS. Um, so <laughs> we've got a a Chevy LS 6 litre cast iron uh, block engine uh, backed up by a 4L ADE uh, transmission that's all been uh, fully rebuilt and uh, strengthened up where it needed to be. The, um, the crown and glory on the LS is also uh, two 66mm uh, precision turbos. Um, so, uh, look, we're not going for massive boost and that's why we've gone 66 mil turbos because they'll spool relatively quickly, but also be, still be fairly streetable, um, but uh, ultimately then be able to do a um, one hell of a uh, trailer skid. And by trailer skid, I don't mean this on a trailer, I mean towing a trailer, doing a power skid. So, um, yeah, watch this space for okay. the future. But um, so runs what? a big intercooler out the front. Um, as I say, twin turbo, all the piping and everything. I've put photos up in the past, but we might um, revisit that as we're going through the, the process of um, install. And what's the front end? Front end's a JAG front end. Um, so a lot of people would be familiar with these. Um, really good ride capability, four spot calipers, uh, good brakes on them, power steering rack. Um, Bits of timber are optional? Yeah. <laughs> Pits of timber may come out, um, and we're just going to go coil spring in the front. So the standard Jag coils. Uh, you've got to remember these Jag front ends. They came out of cars that were about two and a half tons. So um, you know, from an engineering perspective, and also um, just a ride capability, um, very very capable of handling the job of you know a car that's ultimately probably going to weigh two and a half to three ton you know once we load our gear and everything in it so should There's be a bit of fun body up there yep yeah so the body has all been sandblasted it's um in an epoxy primer uh the reason it's up on the hoist other than obviously to get it off the chassis is um Underneath, I've gone around with uh, with some penetrol, which is just like a sealant for underneath and, and uh, helps seal the metal and stop any future corrosion. Uh, I'll then hit the entire underbody with some black Raptor coat, uh, and then the body will ultimately go back on the chassis to stay, and then we're gonna do the panel and paint with the body on the chassis, because it's just too friggin' big to move around on, on any trolley the way it is, so. Being from Arizona, yeah. it didn't wait till a motorbike drives past. It didn't have too much rust in it. We've yeah. got a few rust patches that have you've repaired. Yeah, here. just uh, like all four corners, I suppose, is what I call it. You know, so just those lower dog legs there, and the very back of the uh, the rear quarter, uh, just before it wraps around to the doors. But um, other than that, the rest of the body was really superb. Um, 
you know, it has its normal dings and scrapes. Um, we believe it belonged to a house painter uh, up in the Arizona desert up there somewhere. Uh, the floorboards, everything in there is still in fantastic condition, albeit coated in 40,000 coats of uh, spilled house paint in the back of it, um, which will get done in the near future. Um, yeah, we're running uh, just twin captain's chairs in the front for Deb and I, for those, that comfort and long distance, you know, drive capability. Uh, it'll look a little bit like the space shuttle of sorts in there. Um, we've got a big Alpine, like 11 inch screen that'll run all of the audio visual and all of our cameras, full time reversing camera. Um, and then we've got uh, a full time, yeah, reverse camera screen that'll be up where the rear vision mirror is. Then the centre of the dash will actually fold down and reveal the Holly Dominator um, dash for all of the ECU controls and engine management system. And then uh, in there there's a sneaky little key that's a four position key that allows me to basically change tunes in the engine in the computer. Uh, not on the go so much but you know pull up at a set of lights and if I want to have a uh, have a play against some bloke who's in his pulsar being a smart ass, um, <laughs> we can uh, let rip. So, no offence um, to all the pulsar drivers out yeah. there. <laughs> no pulsar owners were hurt in, harmed in this video. <laughs> no. um, and so we've already done, you've already done the um, conversion? Yeah, so right hand drive conversion's been done, uh, which is, uh, I ended up getting hold of, off a good friend, a uh, right hand drive Aussie pickup dash. Um, it still had its little challenges, you know, because they're not a direct, you know, straight swap over because obviously they were stamped over here, not in the US. So there's slight little differences, but we made that work. Um, then under there, there's a lot of stuff crammed under there. There's an under dash pedal assembly with the booster and everything under there. That's from QE components. Um, we've got air conditioning. The ECU for the Holly Dominator engine management system all mounts up under there as well. Um, as I say, you know, electronic dash, etc., etc., etc. We've got some nice Stuart Warner gauges to go in it, just some analog gauges, which will piggyback off um, all the relative sensors that they need to. Um, yeah, the doors, etc., they're all. Um, uh, doors, guards, bonnet, everything's away at the uh, painters, Shane Dillon, Riff Raff Hot Rods, uh, mate of ours who you've seen in our other videos is uh, undertaking the, <laughs> the mammoth task of helping us with this one too. So, um, so just as a size comparison, the back of the driver's seat to the back inside the back door is two and a half metres. Mm, yeah, so anyone familiar with like the 3100 series pickups and panel trucks this is actually a 3800 series so they were a one ton rated so one ton payload rated so heavier chassis heavier front end etc etc um but uh yeah it has about two and a half foot extra overall in the in the length of the vehicle um some of that is behind the rear wheels and some of that is in the middle of the vehicle so quite different and that's that's i think what um sort of made us fall in love with it it was just this bit here is the door for the garage yeah <laughs> and it goes right from the door yeah and i haven't got the uh the tow bar <laughs> or the the bumpers or anything on it as yet so once we do put all of that onto it it's actually too long to fit in the shed, so um, that's uh -oh. a little dilemma. <laughs> but uh, we'll uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But, we already um, had to take a set of shelves out. Yes, we uh, got rid of a set of shelves. Yeah, so there's a lot of quirky, you know, it's all, some quirky ideas that we've come up with. Um, Deb's idea, the big timber surfboard over there, is actually going to mount on some new old stock 1950s era roof racks that we've scored um, and then rather than just being a Malibu up there we're actually going to cut the guts out of it and put um, uh, <laughs> sorry to any uh, surf antique people um, 
put some solar and put solar in. panels in there. We're going to inlay solar panels in it so that when you look at the side of the truck, all you'll see is a, a big Malibu surfboard on there. Which doesn't yeah. look so big on the top. Yeah, that's cool, but um, it's going to help us as well because we are... We are running a dual battery setup in this car as well, so you know to run fridges and you know our stuff for being able to camp off grid because um, it will have bunks etc in the back. Um, yeah, we wanted to be, have that capability to be able to uh, you know go and stay at the the beach somewhere or wherever that may be and and be self sufficient. So um, yeah, as I say, a little bit a little bit different in that respect, but that's. That's kind of where we're at at the moment. So, deadline. Deadline. Um, deadline, I want to drive it to the Bendigo Hot Rod Nationals Easter next year, Easter 2025. Um, so, yeah, look, I look around at the moment and it's certainly doable. I've done a lot of cars on tighter time frames than that, but um, when you're doing this part-time um, you know hence being out here in the evening after working on hot rods all day it's um, it'll still have its challenges and we'll still you know uh, be cutting some parts probably fine but overall I'm pretty confident that we'll uh, we'll be right so uh, yeah hmm. thank you Ta.